Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Static Yonder, and welcome to the video. Today I'll be breaking down the vocals of a very iconic singer, from probably the most famous metal band of all time besides Metallica. Today, I'll be breaking down Mr. Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden. Paul Bruce Dickinson was born in 1958 in Worksop in Nottinghamshire, England. He began his career in music fronting small pub bands in the 1970s while attending school in Sheffield and University in London. In 79 he joined the heavy metal band Samson and began using the stage name Bruce Bruce. He left Samson in 81 to replace Paul Diano as the vocalist of Iron Maiden, debuting on the album Number of the Beast in 82. Bruce quit Maiden in 1993, being replaced by Blaze Bailey. He did this to pursue his own solo career with which he had much success and he experimented with a wide variety of different rock and heavy metal genres. He rejoined Iron Maiden in 1999 along with guitarist Adrian Smith. Outside his career in music, Bruce is well known for having a large variety of different pursuits, the most famous of which is his career as a pilot for Astraeus Airlines. Bruce is also well known to have flown Iron Maiden's very own converted charter aircraft Ed Force One during their world tours. Talk about a multi-role frontman. In 2015, Dickinson was unfortunately diagnosed with a cancerous tumor at the back of his tongue, and he underwent several weeks of chemotherapy and radiotherapy in London. He actually found out that his symptoms that he was experiencing were most likely to be cancer after Googling his symptoms. He's probably the only man in history to actually get a conclusive and truthful result by googling his symptoms and his medical team expected him to make a full recovery because his cancer was detected so early. On May 15th of that year, he was given the all clear by his specialists. Today I'll be analysing his vocals from all the different eras of his career and I'll be doing so as I usually do in four parts. Range, tone, technique and longevity. Let's begin. Range. Once again, for all who may have been led astray by YouTube comments and online message boards, range does not mean high. Range refers to a person's ability to cover a certain distance on the piano. Bruce is quoted as having a range from a bass D2 to a soprano C sharp 6. This gives him a range of 3 octaves and 11 semitones, only one semitone off of 4 octaves. This kind of range is phenomenal and is nothing to be sniffed at. Bruce is definitely a tenor, though in recent years he has gained a much louder and deeper low end, which has allowed him a richer and bigger low register. Tone A tenor, if ever there was one. Bruce has a wonderful nobility and emotion to his tone. He's capable of reaching some very high notes while still preserving his manly vocal colour. Great examples include the high notes in Run to the Hills and Hallowed Be Thy Name. Bruce has a unique, almost strainy overtone to his high notes, especially on closed vowels such as E. Through a microphone it makes him sound quiet, which demonstrates a lack of volume increase as he goes higher, showing complete control over the voice. Yet, as evidenced by his a cappella of Tears of a Dragon, his voice is extremely loud and resonant. This shows that the strainy effect is just that, an effect, not an actual straining of the vocal folds. Bruce has the tone of what is, to me, the quintessential British tenor, though bolstered with a heavy metal rasp and a punchy head voice. Technique Bruce's technique is almost unmatched. He has the incredible range of Rob Halford with the tone and breath support akin to Eric Adams. Diaphragmatic breathing isn't just a technique to Bruce, it's law. In this clip from a TV interview in late 2017, Bruce explains his view on the voice, singing, storytelling and correct technique. 
And it, it's, it's quite a strain on your voice as well, isn't it? Um, yeah, although you get used to it. I mean, your voice is a muscle like anything else. Um, and as long as you don't abuse use it and you use it correctly, then it will last. But what, what is using it correctly? I mean, I, I'm not a great believer that, 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 uh, that a voice is just about singing. Voice is a, a tool for communication. And, and as, as a singer, all you are really is a storyteller. Um, and it just so happens that obviously with my voice, I tell stories a particular way. But if you're Leonard Cohen, you have a different voice mm. and you still tell great stories. But are you aware of, of the voice being an instrument as well? Talking is disaster. Is it? For the voice, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because when you sing, all the muscles in the voice are used in completely the opposite way. I'm talking to you now and I'm, I'm using everything from here down. Well, when I'm singing, I'm using everything from here up. And this is, this is really tries to be as relaxed as possible. Mm. So all it is is think of it like an organ pipe. Basically, lots of rest, sleep, always, uh, yes. <laughs> plenty of water, keep it hydrated. Um, don't go out yelling in pubs after the show. Mm. You know. <laughs> From this, you can see clear as day that he knows exactly what he's talking about. Bruce's understanding of the voice, the science behind the way it works, and methods required to maintain vocal health is just brilliant. If there was any doubt as to how he recovered from cancer and still managed to sing as ever, this interview can put it to rest. Bruce is a master of technical and emotional singing, probably the greatest hurdle all singers have to overcome. Longevity. Bruce sounds essentially the same today as he did in the 80s. While his strainy sound has become more noticeable with age, the fact that this man is not only essentially frozen in time vocally, but also has managed to have bouts of chemo and radiation therapy for throat cancer and still sound the same, should make his longevity self-evident. Bruce goes into detail about his cancer in the previously shown interview and what he thought it could mean for his career at the time. And at the time I was doing a, the Iron Maiden album, The Book of Souls. So I was singing away and it was all sounding great and everybody was going, wow, it's all sounding terrific, you know. Was it, was it just a lump or, or could you, no, could you I mean, feel I had, it in your, I mean, was it, no, no, I were you in a bad shape? Or? I couldn't feel anything. I had a couple of things, because I, I, I know my body I hope quite well because I, I I was a, a you know a fencer and I did a lot of athletics. So I know my body. I don't take any drugs or anything. So when something's wrong, I can feel it. And I couldn't exactly tell you what I thought might be wrong, but something just didn't feel right. So I thought, oh, maybe I'm getting a cold, but I never got a cold. Mm. Maybe I'm sweating a bit at night, but I still didn't feel ill. Mm. Anyway, I Googled, Googled all this stuff and I went, hmm, I'm 55 years old, I don't smoke, um, don't take drugs, I don't drink a lot except beer a little bit, but uh, basically, so if I have a lump here and I'm in this age group and I have this and this and this, I could have um, throat cancer. What? <laughs> what? What would cause that? Answer human papillomavirus, because that's what causes yeah. it in guys who are 40 to 55 years old. There's an epidemic of it in, in the world. Uh, the thought occurred to me, I might not be able to sing again. Um, thankfully, that's not the case, but um, I did think about it and I thought, you know what? Even if my voice changed completely, it still doesn't mean I can't tell stories. Maybe I have to tell them a different way. Mm. And maybe I couldn't do them with Iron Maiden, but it still doesn't stop you if you're if what you want to do is tell stories, then I, you'll find a way to do it. Bruce's longevity is world class, and I hope to see him asking the venue he's playing at to scream for him for many years to come. And 
there you have it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that was Bruce Dickinson. My final closing thoughts is that he is one of the greatest singers of all time. He's up there. You know, he is one of the greats. He's a metric by which we use to measure a lot of singers and their skills and so forth. I've taken off the jacket and all that, by the way, because I'm boiling hot and I really can't be asked to wear it right now. For the next video, I'm uh, thinking of doing Peter Steele, as I mentioned in my last update. But let me know in the comments below what you would like me to break down next. I've had a couple of requests for Tom Araya and Let Me Kill Mister. So, as always, I will begin production in about two weeks. So there's still time. So pop in the comments below if you're in that time frame. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.